Now let's go to vectors. In physics, we have two groups of quantities. Uh, one group is called scalars, and the other group is called uh, vectors. The scalars are just are just quantities represented by a magnitude. The magnitude is just a number in uh, the unit. What about vectors? Quantities represented by magnitude and direction. Okay, these are the main scalars and vectors in mechanics. We have mass, distance, time, speed, work, energy, pressure, area, volume, density. And the vectors are displacement, velocity, acceleration, force, impulse, momentum, and torque. Okay, let's just start with adding vectors. This video is on um, vector addition. The next part, part two, is going to be vector multiplication. Great. Uh, to add vectors, we use two uh, techniques, two methods. One is the graphical and the other one is the analytical. In the graphical method, we have head to tail or tip to tail technique. And we divide this in uh, two groups triangle when we have only two vectors and polygon more than two vectors. A parallelogram uh, also belongs to this group. And then uh, the analytical method is uh, mainly components and also we can use sometimes, right, law of sines and law of cosines. Okay, let's do it. How do, how do we represent a vector? Well, a vector is represented, is represented by this arrow, by two represented by this arrow, this is vector A, also by this symbol, a letter A, an arrow on the top. This represents the magnitude, because we are dealing with magnitude and direction. This represents the magnitude, magnitude, or is proportional to the magnitude, and this angle represents the direction when we are dealing with vectors in 2D. Uh, if we are in 1D, let's say in the x direction, horizontal, this direction is positive, right? And this is going to be negative. If we are in the y direction, point up is positive and going down is negative. That's the convention. Okay, perfect. Now, um, let's add vectors using a head to tail. Technique. By the way, if this is a vector, this is a tail, and this is a head or tail. Perfect. Now let's do it. Imagine that we have these two vectors vector A. Also, we have units. Imagine this is a two units. Vector B is going to be three units. Vector B, three units. Correct. Now let's find the addition of these two vectors. Well, if we have two vectors, the resultant, the sum is another vector in general. The same thing as if we have two scalars. Two scalars, the answer is a new scalar. For example, if we have two kilograms plus two kilograms, four kilograms. For vectors, the same thing, correct? If we have this vector, uh, in this vector, we are, we are dealing with a head to tail. Let's use, well, no, it's not triangle yet, but this is only 1D, correct? Means that we, uh, we take the, uh, the ve second vector and place the tail of the second one at the tip or head of the first one. So we move it in this way, and then let's represent it this, like this, uh, the same vector uh, A, and now this is vector B, imagine that this is the case. This is vector A, vector B. So the sum is um, the uh, vector that is drawn from the tail of the first one to the tip of the last one. The symbol for this new vector is going to be R. R is the sum or resultant. Correct? Then it's equals to vector A plus vector B. And in this case, um, how many units do we have? Well, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five units. This is five units to the right. That should be uh, the new vector or the resultant, the sum. Right? Now, what happens if we have these two vectors? 
one more time this is vector a correct two units and but now this is vector uh, c imagine is gonna be um how many units okay three units the same thing as for b vector c this is vector a and the same thing let's add these two vectors a plus a plus c let's do right here a plus c what do we have well let's take the tail of the second vector and place it right at the tip of the first vector and what do we have well we have this situation one more time this is vector a two units let's take this vector right keep in the same magnitude direction and place it correct in this way it must be exactly right here but uh, just for illustration let's uh, keep it like this correct it's gonna be one two three units for vector c vector a what should be the sum the resultant is the vector drawn from the first from the tail of the first one to the tip of the last one this is vector r okay so the result is equals to one more time a plus c and this is equals to one unit one unit could be a uh, one meter we're dealing with spacemen or meters per second if we're dealing with uh, velocities or newtons if we're dealing with forces correct it's gonna be one unit to the uh, left or just negative uh, one unit correct and we are in the x direction the same thing happens in the y direction great now let's go to the triangle technique let's do it let's do it the triangle technique what do we have right here in this case uh imagine that we have this vector uh imagine three units vector c and we have this vector correct with four units vector um d what should be the resultant? But we're adding already vector right tail to tip technique in this way. Uh, again, is the vector drawn from the tail of the first one to the tip of the last one? So vector R. That's the sum. So vector R is equals to C plus D. Correct. Perfect. And uh, in this case, what should be the um, the value? Well. This is equals to, I well, will represent it like that, correct? Now, what should be the magnitude in this case? The magnitude is represented, magnitude, uh, when we are in 2D, remember this is at the end of theta, magnitude is represented by this quantity or this quantity like that, right? This is magnitude, magnitude. And theta, when we're dealing in 2D, will represent the direction. In 1D, we just mentioned, right? In 1D, to the right is positive, to the left is negative, going up is positive, and going down is negative. That's the convention in 1D. Right? But in 2D is um, the angle. In 3D, we need another angle. But usually, we don't work too much in 3D, right? Mainly in 2D or in 1D. Great. Um, then from here, uh, this is correct, correct, but um, uh, also we can represent the vector using the definition of a vector. Definition is quantity represented by magnitude and direction. Now, let's find the magnitude of vector r, which is the sum. Also, let's find the direction. Okay, let's do it. What should be the magnitude? The magnitude is this, uh, this section. And... Um, this uh, we can calculate it using the Pythagorean theorem for this case. So R, which is the magnitude, is equal to square root of magnitude of C squared plus magnitude of D squared. Let's have the two values. What should be C is gonna be three squared plus four squared. What is the answer? It's gonna be five units. That's the magnitude. Okay, what about the direction? Theta, again, using trigonometry is equals to inverse tangent of the y component which is d which is d in this picture which is d divided by c 
Corvallis is tangent inverse of what is the magnitude of C is 4 divided by 3. Well, we say calculator, we can find that uh, um, uh, angle, right? That direction. Perfect. Now, um, again, we are in the triangle method. This is the way using the head to tail technique. Correct. We have more examples. This is magnitude, magnitude. Okay, that's direction. Great. Now uh, let's go to another example. You might look at this vector one more time. This vector plus this vector. Uh, let's label this A. Let's label this as D one more time. How we can find the result? Well, let's move this right in this direction and let's place the tail of the second one at the tip of the first one. Imagine that that's the situation. These are parallel, right? The same magnitude, same direction. This is vector t. Uh, what should be um, the result on the sum? It's going to be this uh, vector. Correct. So one more time, vector r for the sum is equals to a plus d in this case. Perfect. This is the triangle method. We create triangles where we have two angles um, that are not uh, parallel. Great. Now let's go to the polygon technique. And in this case, we are dealing with more than two vectors. When we are dealing with more than two vectors, we use the polygon technique. But it's the same way. We use this vector plus this vector plus this vector, correct, plus that vector. Let's say A, B, C, D vectors. What should be the sum and the result? And one more time, is the vector drawn from the tail of the first one to the tip of the last one? This is vector r. Correct. And then uh, what do we have? r is equals to a plus b plus c plus d. Perfect. Now imagine that this is vector e. This is correct. Now let's go to this case. Vector vector let's now let's go in this way imagine now this is vector e what should be the result of for this case is equals to zero right because this is no gap correct there is not um, a vector that goes from the third of the first one to the tip of the last one so the vector is zero but we have uh, complete right a uh, a loop right a circle like this or could be like this this vector plus this vector plus this vector, well, there's no gap right here, right? It's gonna be zero. Okay, the sum of the resultant. Now let's go to the parallelogram technique. Yes, parallelogram technique. In this case, we are supposed to form parallelograms. This is parallel to this one, and this line is parallel to that one. And this is a parallelogram, correct? So we have a vector in this direction, a vector in that direction, and that's the resultant. For example, imagine, imagine we have this vector and we have uh, this vector again. This is vector C and vector E. Let's bring then this, let's, let's create a parallelogram like this. It means I've got to bring this vector right and place it, the tail of vector E on the tail of vector C. And imagine that this is the situation, okay? These two are parallel, and this is vector B. What should be then the sum? Well, we create a parallelogram of these two vectors, and this is the resultant, vector R. So vector R is equals to vector B plus vector C. Look, as you can see, um, we can use the same technique as before using uh, head to tail, correct? Because we can uh, use uh, the tail right and the head right here in this way, and that's gonna be, it's gonna be vector E. In this case, this plus this is what? 
uh, the same resultant, correct? The same resultant equals to vector C plus vector E. What about if we're going this way? Um, e plus C using the same head to tail. So in this case, the vector R, the sum is equals to vector E plus vector C. So when we add in vectors, that's a matter of the order. Right, the answer is gonna be the same. Correct. Perfect. Now let's go to the next technique method. It's gonna be component. Perfect. When we have component, we just project. Project the uh, vector onto the x-axis and onto the y-axis. So this is x and y directions. For so this is the vector a. Okay, and when we project this vector onto this um, direction, this is this um, vector component, correct? And we have this vector component. And you can see this is the same thing as the parallelogram technique, right? We create a parallelogram. Well, we can take this as the angle, for example. Okay, so what should be then this vector a equals to this vector a sub x plus a sub y. These are actually the vector components, right? Vector uh, components, component. But it's better when we're adding vectors to use a magnitude and direction. Right here, magnitude and direction is implicit, right? Magnitude and direction is implicit. We have to do this explicitly, right? We have to take out or uh, separate magnitude and direction to make it easier. Okay, perfect. Um, to do that, we use, again, uh, the magnitude, instead of using vectors, we use magnitude in this way. So we use the magnitude Right, and we use the magnitude in this direction. But this is magnitude in the x direction, magnitude in the y direction. But what should be then the, the direction? We need symbols for directions, right? In the x direction, in the x direction, this is uh, represent the, uh, the direction, is it i hat, right? i hat, and in this direction is j hat, j hat. Um, this is for x direction and this is for y direction. For uh, z direction, it's gonna be uh, k hat. This is for z direction. And in this case, we represent um, we represent uh, the beginning. Remember, uh, we have we we uh, we had this notation correct plus uh, let's say a y. Now we break this into. Uh, uh, magnitude direction. What is the magnitude? Remember the magnitude is just this quantity without the arrow on the top. What should be the direction? I have plus what? Plus um, a sub y is going to be a sub y, j hat. So in this case, this is the, um, the best use for uh, vectors when we are adding or multiplying vectors. Correct? In this case, I had right uh, the magnitude is equals to the magnitude for j hat is equals to the magnitude for uh, k hat. Remember, these are the uni vectors, uni vectors, and the magnitude is one. This vector gives us just that direction because magnitude is one. Okay, now using this um, a scalar's component or yeah, scalar's com. Component, we can work with um, adding vectors, right? Because we are adding vectors, adding right vectors. Okay, you've seen this technique. Great. Imagine, imagine that we have these uh, vectors. These two vectors. Imagine that we have, and this is uh, the Cartesian coordinate x and y, and imagine we have these two vectors, vector a, vector a plus vector b. 
using the uh, head to tail or tip to tail technique. What should be the result? Of? Well, the result is gonna be the vector that goes from the tail of the first one to the tip of the last one, vector R. Correct? Perfect. Now, let's use component. This is component in the X direction, correct? This is gonna be a component from here to here, X direction, from here to here, so for, for B in the X direction, correct? The same thing in the Y direction. Okay, this is um, Y component, right? And this is for uh, B component, right? I also, look, um, we can project this vector R, the resultant R to the X axis and Y axis. Again, don't worry about A and, A and B, just pay attention on R and project it on the X axis. And it's gonna be the projection, right? It's gonna be R sub uh, X, the same thing in the Y direction, right? Correct? Let's why. As you can see, uh, right here, this component is equal to A sub X plus a B sub X, correct? The same thing happens right here. Right, the Y components is the sum of these components. So in this way, it's easier to um, add vectors, correct? For example, let's continue in this case. Let's continue in this case. Uh, you represent vector A as AX, right? Plus uh, AY and B as a B sub X plus B sub Y. What should be a uh, vector R, the sum? Vector R is equals to the sum of these two vectors, right? So it's equals to this vector plus this component plus this component, chorus vector A plus vector B, which is B sub X plus B sub Y. Right, J hat. So in this case, we add, like in this picture, right, the components in the same directions. In this case, I'm gonna be X sub X plus B sub X in this direction, plus um, A sub Y plus B sub Y in the J direction. And this is the way how we add vectors. Also remember that this is just uh, R sub X and uh, R sub Y. And the same thing, let's find the magnitude, right? Magnitude is equals to the square root of this component, which is the sum of which is this one right here, correct? Plus this component square. And what should be, again, this is magnitude. Magnitude. What should be the direction? Again, this inverse tangent of y over x and this is direction correct this is when we are dealing in um, in two, adding uh, two vectors the same thing happens if we have uh, another vector correct imagine that we have three vectors for three vectors we use the same technique for the same technique yeah uh, imagine we have another vector vector c uh, what should be then the result as well? Using components, the result is going to be um, a sub x plus b sub x plus c sub x, correct? In this direction, x direction, correct? Plus um, a y plus, c, uh, plus b y plus c y, and so on. Plus b y plus c y, correct? J hat. And um, we calculate in the, in the same way the magnitude and the direction. Correct? Perfect. Also, uh, we mentioned that we can use sometimes sine, uh, log sine, and log of cosine. Okay, in that case, in that case, um, imagine that we have this situation uh, back to like this. This is A, B, C, correct? Let's take this to be a vector uh, angle alpha, 
by beta in gamma. Now let's use a law of sines. We can use in this way a over sine alpha equals to b over sine beta equals to c over sine gamma. The same thing for law of cosines. Correct? It's going to be, for example, uh, let's say a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus twice um, dc cosine dc cosine cosine uh, alpha, correct? The same thing, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine gamma, correct? And so on. Perfect. Also, also we have um, this uh, component. Imagine that we have this um, quadrant, right? We have the first quadrant, second, third, and fourth quadrant. And also we have vector, let's say vector A. And now let's use component, the components of vector A. Imagine this is the angle is uh, 30 degrees, and this is, um, let's say, x direction, correct, correct, and y direction. Well, what should be the component in the x direction? It's equals to a cosine right 30 degrees, what about in the y direction? It's gonna be uh, a sine 30 degrees. What about the vector right here? Imagine the vector. And now this is uh, 50 degrees. Let's find the component. Where's the vector B? Find the component in the y direction and component in the x direction. Let's do it. In the uh, x direction, what is this component equals to? It's gonna be V cosine, what is the angle from here to here, right? It's gonna be 130 degrees or equals to negative b cosine 50 degrees because it's going in the negative direction right this is positive and negative if we use 50 why we use negative right here what about in the y direction it's equals to b sine 130 degrees so equals to v sine 50 degrees in this case y is gonna be positive the component this component right here right gonna be positive going up perfect what about another vector here right now imagine this is 45 degrees right 45 degrees let's find this component it's vector c okay c right and in the x direction is equals to c what else cosine what is the angle from here to here right Remember, we are in the in the third quadrant. What should be the angle? Is one eighty plus forty five is two twenty five, right? Two twenty five degrees, or equals to negative c, and because also it's negative, c cosine of forty five degrees. What about in the y direction? The component is gonna be c sine two twenty five, or equals to negative. It's also going, it goes down, C sine 45 degrees. Imagine we have one more right here, correct? Uh, this is a vector D, and let's look for the component. Now imagine this is 20 degrees. Okay, the same thing as before. Let's find the X goes to D, uh, what else? Um, cosine of three, 40 degrees correct or equals to negative d cosine 20 degrees what about in the y direction in the y direction we have d sine 340 degrees or equals to negative d sine 20 degrees is this negative no this is positive correct it's positive goes in that in that direction 
correct. Perfect. Yeah, and this one is gonna be negative, the white component. Okay, great. See again, this is um, the component in each quadrant, correct? And well, with this, we finish the um, uh, vector addition in this part. The second part, again, is going to be vector multiplication. Okay, see you then in the next video. Thank you.